Hi. So my name is Jonathan. I'm the VFX supervisor for season four. I'm going to quickly go through uh, three different sort of effects that are recurrent throughout the season and uh, hopefully get a few seconds of Q&A for you guys. So my role basically on the show is to help the director achieve his, his vision, his or her vision, throughout the use of visual effects as well as try and help the uh, VFX studio, which in this case is Oblique FX, uh, have all the elements they need to make the effect as nice and as interesting as possible. So the first effect we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna show you is, as Eric d d d d described, the wolf this transformation goes through stages, and for us, we need to be able to, to, to morph from one stage to the other using visual effects. So this is a final shot blending the use of prosthetics and VFX. The beginning of the shot is fully uh, prosthetics and we need to add certain elements to help him uh, transform from stage one to two and two and three and so on. So the first layer of what we need is, this is the actual footage. So this is full prosthetics. On top of that, what we need to do is we need to, hold on one second. First, first thing we need to do is track the, the movement for us to be able to add certain elements as, as hair or in this case, we need to reproject the footage back on top of our 3D geometry to be able to stretch, stretch it out afterwards to, to create that, that morph. One of the CG elements, here we have an example of the hair as its own separate layer. Like this, it looks kind of funky, but once it's all integrated, it looks pretty, pretty amazing. Then we have the hair which is comped back onto the face. Once that is achieved, then we go and stretch out all of that together to get the transformation. And the only element missing now is the teeth, which in this case were shot with the actor, but now we sort of do it without teeth, so it's, we don't have to paint out the teeth and add in other teeth on top. So this is the CG teeth layer. Mm -hmm. To go back to giving us the final shot, which looked like this. So many, many, many hours on Alex's side, and then once we get all the footage, it's a lot, many more hours to get that effect done. So that was one effect that is pretty recurrent. After that, we have the, the, the biggest challenge for the VFX company is when we get to see a full CG wolf. And that went through a lot of different <coughs> stages. First off being, of course, we need to be able to, go to decide prior to building all that in CG, there's a lot of different sketches and, and, uh, and R&D that goes into it. So that is sort of a sketch. Once the sketch is done and approved, we had an artist build a mold of the actual werewolf so that we can see it in real space and sort of play around with it and make sure that, that, that it's, it's exactly the sort of volume and the way the muscles are built that it will be an interesting way to have him move. Once that is approved, we had it scanned in 3D to give us the actual model. So this is from a 3D scan, it looks a bit washed out here, but. It's pretty, it's pretty detailed. Once that is done, we need to add on texture onto the model. So you can see him here. This is without the hair, so it looks kind of weird, but it's to show all the nice texturing that goes into the model. And it's always based on Eric's model because we need to be able to have them match 
One thing that we use a lot in our, uh, in our field for lighting purposes is on set, one thing I have to do is use a big spherical uh, mirror to be able to capture the ambient lighting that is, that is in the shot. So it looks like this. So this is the chrome ball. So I had to take multiple exposures to be able to get an HDRI image out of it. So we have overexposed, normal exposure, and underexposed. And as you can see you, see, you see exactly where all the lights are placed inside the scene. Once we get that into the computer, we can apply it on an inverse sphere, and that creates the actual lighting onto our model. And we can sort of use like a slider and, and adjust the intensity of the lighting to get to achieve the exact lighting that we had on set. So here you can see the model once properly shaded and with the HDRI and the fur onto it. This is an example of, of this is one of the backgrounds that this is the actual background used to light the, the wolf. So it'll, it'll have the exact light sources, the right shadows, the correct everything onto it. Here we have a few, I have two nice examples of animation tests because before doing the shot, there's a lot of R&D that goes into animation for the, the werewolf running, the werewolf jumping, how do the werewolf uh, attacks, how, it, how facial movements work and all that. So here we have our full CG wolf on our basic run cycle. And here you have an example of facial animation tests, which are pre pretty interesting. So that covers the wolves. Another effect that we that that came out throughout the the, the season is that there's a lot of of shredding the, the the ghosts and and particle effects and fire, as you've seen in one of the previous seasons, which I'm going to show you a little breakdown of the how it's achieved right here. Hold on just one second. Excuse me. Way too many quick times open at the same time. There we go. Okay, once again. So here, of course, on set, there wasn't any fire actually used. What we need to do is uh, plan the shot prior to shooting it to be able to have uh, the guys on set add practical lighting, practical wind, and all sorts of practical effects that are going to help us achieve a more realistic look afterwards. Because if, if nothing happens on set, you'll always feel that the effects is just pasted back onto it. So there's a lot of planning that goes into how do we make the shot as believable as possible. Here you see the nice, nice shredding effect. So this is the plate that was shot. The actress had, uh, had actual lights in her hands to be able to cast lighting to recreate as if the fire was there, so she had to mimic all the movement and had the light interact with all her body. On top of that, afterwards, we have, as I, as I showed you previously, we have to, once again, match move all the act actress's movements to be able to have a 3D mesh of her doing the exact same actions. Once that is done, we can then create our first layer, which is the CG fire, which is, uh, as, you've, pretty, as you've, you, you've all heard, I'm sure, before, fire, water, snow, all those, those real life effects are, are always really hard to recreate, because uh, we're so used to seeing them in real life that if they're a bit off, you, you, you instantly know that it's not real and it's, not, it's, it's full CG. And having the, the practical lighting helps us a lot into creating a believable effect. 
So we have fire on top of that. Once, we have, once the fire is onto the axis, we need to create what we call a, a global illumination pass to stick back on the actor for, him, for, her, for her to have, on top of the actual lighting, another pass of lighting which is exactly the same as animation as the flames, which looks like this. On top of that, we add CG smoke. And once we combine, we recombine all of those effects, we get to having our final shot, which hopefully will always, we will always be able to do the most uh, believable effect. So I can show you once again a complete breakdown in context. So there you go. Do you have any questions? I know it's a lot to sort of absorb in 10 minutes, but... Uh, we used a uh, soft image. In Montreal, since it was a software was created in Montreal, uh, sort of the older studios have been using it since, since its beginning, and quite a few studios still use that software here. So we use a soft image and, uh, uh, and the new ice system to create all the particles. So how long did it take to put this shot together? Is it the same? Uh, this whole scene is uh, about, uh, I, I'd say about two weeks of work, depending, because each shot is not done by one single person. In, inside of a studio, you ha always have different departments. So you have the match mover department, so that person will take about two or three days to match move the, the movement. But parallel to that, you'll have somebody working on the particles who will work on a few days of R&D, and then once he gets the shot with the match move tracking, he'll spend a few days creating the effect. Then we'll switch that. Once that is done, we switch that to the comping department, which will spend ranging from a few hours to a few days on one single shot. In this case, on, for the whole scene, probably a good week on a few person doing all the different little tweaks and, and comps and masks and rotos and all that to make it work. So I'd say for this whole scene, it's probably a good two weeks of work on about five or, five or six person. Just, I mean, with everything that you can do, since you can keep adding more, what is your, your guy as far as when you've done enough? Well, it's, it's never enough. You're never completely happy with a shot. Uh, time and money will always be the, the factor that'll, that'll decide when, when it's enough. Uh, but, but in the end, once the director is happy, then we move on to something else. Because for a TV series, uh, even, even as though the series is being shot, the effects are being done in parallel. So we're, the studio has already, already started working on all the effects for the first episodes, even though we're shooting, we're still shooting now. So there's not a lot of time to do each effect. So time depend, time is really the, the main factor for that. So we, do, we try and do the most R&D as possible before getting some, some plates. But once the, once the show starts running, then it's, uh, you have a few weeks to do all the episode and that's it. Um, you talked about it a bit at the beginning. Um, obviously, with the prosthetics and everything, you can build off of that. Um, but what would you say is your biggest challenge of sort of like going from the prosthetics into the CG? What would be your biggest issue sort of linking the two? Um, well, the biggest thing is for sure once it's when it's full CG, it's it's it can be easier because you have no reference. When we have to match uh, the transformations, that that's that's hard because sometimes you need to add, you need to add uh, there's certain stages that are more fully CG or sometimes because of a because of shooting schedule or stuff like that, one more for one transformation will be full CG, but that look has to match whatever Eric did, which is which looks real because it is real. So that is one big challenge. Whenever you have to to match reality, that's always really hard because because the audience has a, a real reference to compare it to. 
from a creative standpoint, is it easier or harder to work from previous from from previous maps and frames that you already created and you already have a tone that you set for the series? Is it creatively stifling to have to keep working from that or do you really have a broader range of well, every season we, of course, try and reuse stuff that was previously done so that not to start over from scratch, but the cool thing is that each season we get to, have, we, we get to use our time to uh, make the, the effects or make the model better and better and more realistic, and technology goes really, uh, advances really fast, so each, each, when each, time, each season comes up, there's a new plugin or there's a new tool that came out that we can apply it onto what's been done and makes it look that much better. So reusing all our, uh, 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 some of our stuff is actually uh, fun for us because we don't have to start from scratch each time. We can, the first season is the roughest because you start from, from nothing. But once you have all your assets done, then it's making them better. So you can spend your time on fine tuning and making, making it look the way you really want it. Do you feel like you're locked in? No, no, because each season has uh, their own really their own uh, range of different shots and different effects, and each shot is is never the same. Uh, lighting wise, camera work wise, uh, storytelling wise, uh, so there's there's there there are no two shots that are exactly the same. So it's always a new challenge. So, so what new effects are you introducing this season? Uh, I, I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.